The uh, next example that we are going to look at uh, involves uh, gasoline E10, uh, which is actually a blend of 90 percent N octane and 10 percent ethanol. As uh, many of you may be aware, uh, this sort of blended fuel is becoming uh, very popular nowadays. So, uh, gasoline is blended with ethanol to uh, not only reduce the dependence on oil, but also you know, to reduce emissions and so on. Okay. So, it is a, it's a very popular fuel nowadays and we are asked to determine it is a lower cal calorific value. Enthalpy of formation of liquid N octane and uh, liquid ethanol are given and the specific gravity uh, of the uh, two fuels in the blend uh, are also given. Okay. So, um, 1 liter of the fuel contains 0 0.9 liter of N octane and uh, 0 0.1 liter of ethanol. So, if we uh, multiply this by the uh, uh, density, then uh, we get that 1 liter of the blended fuel contains 0 0.6327 kg uh, of ethanol. I am sorry of N octane and 0 0.1 times 0 0.79 or 0 0.079 kg of ethanol uh, of ethanol okay. uh, or on a molar basis uh, uh, this works out to 5.55 moles of N octane and 1.7174 moles of uh, ethanol in 1 liter of the blended fuel or the mole fraction may be worked out to be 0.7637 and 0.2363. So, the um, uh, so the chemical reaction for the complete combustion of the blended fuel with stoichiometric air may be written like this. So, we worked out the mole fraction to be 0.7637 and 0.2363. So, we are using that here and after balancing the chemical reaction you can see that the uh, amount of uh, the number of moles of air that is required is 10.25515 times 4.76 that is number of kilo moles of air I am sorry. Uh, so, the products are shown here and SFE applied to the combustor in this case reduces to something like this. Remember LCV is calculated with uh, reactants and products uh, being at 298 Kelvin. Okay. So, this comes out to be 4167335 kilo joule per kilo mole of fuel or uh, using the values in the combustion tables. Notice that uh, these values are given in the problem statement. So, uh, HF of uh, HF naught of CO2 and HF naught H2O are available in the combustion table. So, we uh, may work out that the uh, lower calorific value of the fuel uh, comes out to be 42,553 kilo joule per kg of fuel. Okay puts it in the same range as other hydrocarbon fuels. The only difference being that the ethanol fuel brings in uh, more, uh, I mean it brings in oxygen which was not present before in the fuel stream itself. Okay. So, the advantages and disadvantages of having uh, uh, fuel like this um, uh, will be uh, discussed is usually discussed in courses on combustion because uh, using a fuel like ethanol has implications on the um, uh, emissions aspect. It's a, it lowers certain kinds of emissions, but it also has certain uh, disadvantages okay. and uh, these are usually discussed in great detail in courses on combustion. So, the uh, next topic that we are going to discuss is the uh, following. So, let us say we have a combustor like this. Which is fully insulated. So, we have uh, let us say air and uh, fuel which enter the uh, uh, combustor let us say at the same temperature at a temperature T1 let us say. So, air enters at temperature T1 fuel also enters at temperature T1 and products leave at a certain temperature uh, which is to be determined. So, basically once a um, uh, reactor is completely insulated all the uh, enthalpy of the reaction goes into the products. So, the resulting temperature of the products is known as the adiabatic flame temperature. <coughs> that is the maximum product temperature that we are going to see or we will see <coughs> with uh, 
that is a that is a maximum temperature that we will see <coughs> uh, as a result of compression of the uh, particular fuel that we are looking at. Okay. <coughs> so, if you apply SFE to this uh, reactor, uh, you can see that in this case <coughs> H reactants is equal to H products. So, the temperature of the product in this case is called the adiabatic uh, flame uh, temperature. It is an important concept since it represents the theoretical maximum product temperature that can be realized at the combustor exit. <coughs> so, if you want to get an idea of what the maximum temperature possible is with a particular fuel, we calculate the adiabatic flame temperature okay, and that gives us an upper bound on the temperature that we are likely to see. So, uh, this, uh, this expression itself H reactants equal to H products is illustrated uh, uh, <coughs> graphically in this, uh, in this diagram. Okay? So, as we said because combustion is a, an exothermic reaction H reactants is always greater than H products and the uh, variation of H bar reactants and H bar products with temperature is shown in this. Okay? Since H bar uh, products is equal to H bar reactants in this case, let us say that the reactants come in at a temperature T1. So, this is H bar reactants, right? So, this is H bar reactants. So, the products leave at a temperature which is such that H bar products is equal to H bar reactants. So, you can see that the reactants come in at uh, much lower temperature, but the products on account of the fact that H bar products equal to H bar reactants leave at a much higher temperature. Let us uh, work out an example uh, illustrating this concept. A stoichiometric mixture of methane and air at 298 Kelvin enters an insulated combustor where it undergoes complete combustion. Determine the temperature of the products leaving the combustor. Okay, so, SFE applied to this uh, combustor gives us the following and um, uh, for uh, stoichiometric combustion of methane you know that. So, this is the balanced chemical reaction for the combustion of uh, methane with air. So, SFE applied uh, to the combustor gives us this, uh, the air and uh, the fuel enter at 298 Kelvin. So, that means the sensible enthalpy is 0 on the uh, reactant side which is what we have done here. And of course, as before enthalpy of formation of uh, O2 and N2 or uh, 0 because they occur naturally. So, this is on the uh, reactant side. On the product side, we have uh, this expression which is the uh, sum of the enthalpies of uh, CO2, H2O and N2. So, if you substitute the known values, notice that uh, the enthalpies of formation are all uh, known here. So, this is given in the problem statement. This is known, uh, this is known and the uh, um, sensible enthalpy on the product side is not known because the exit temperature is not known. We have to calculate the exit temperature. So, the uh, uh, delta H bar CO2, delta H bar H2O and delta H bar uh, N2 are not known. Okay. So, these are not known since the temperature is not known. So, if you uh, gather the unknown quantities on the left hand side, this is the expression that we get okay? and the resulting temperature has to be determined iteratively. Okay? So, uh, we start with, um, uh, with a guest value for the, um, for the temperature, okay? let us say 1700 Kelvin. And if you evaluate the left hand side of this expression at 1700 Kelvin, we get uh, this number which is less than the target value that we are seeking. Okay? So, now we, um, uh, 
we guess another value which is higher let us say 2400 Kelvin and the uh, left hand side of this expression comes out to be uh, higher than the target value. So, now uh, we know that it is uh, between 1700 and 2400. So, we take a slightly lower guess which is 2300 Kelvin and we get the uh, left hand side to be uh, just below or just less than the target value. So, we have one uh, temperature at 2400 the left hand side is greater than the target value and at 2300 the value uh, that the left hand side is less than the target value. So, we can actually interpolate for the target value and uh, estimate the temperature to be approximately 2330 Kelvin. 2330 Kelvin the temperature of the product and as you can see this is, uh, is relatively high temperature. So, the adiabatic flame temperature uh, can thus be seen to be the uh, upper bound on the product temperature. <laughs> So, this completes the discussion on the first law analysis of combustion systems. Uh, let us take up uh, second law analysis of combustion systems next. I discussed at the beginning of the uh, uh, first law analysis of uh, combustion systems that energy balance for a combustion process must take into account enthalpy of formation of the participating species because the uh, product composition is different from the reactant comp uh, composition. So, species that are present in the reactant stream or absent in the product stream and vice versa. Okay. So, which means bo bonds are being broken in species and new bonds are uh, being formed in new species. Okay. So, the energy balance must take the energy in the bonds into account in this case and not just uh, the sensible enthalpy alone. Okay. We have done all the calculations so far with sensible enthalpy alone which sufficed because the composition of the uh, mixture uh, that we were considering did not really change CO2 remained as CO2, O2 remained as O2 and so on. Okay. So, sensible enthalpy is sufficient in that case, but now we have to take we have to take into account enthalpy of formation along with sensible enthalpy. In the same manner and for the same reason entropy uh, balance for a combustion process requires absolute entropy for each species because we are no longer calculating just S and uh, just delta S we are actually looking at S for each species because there are new species on the product side. Uh, different species on the reactant side. So, we need the absolute entropy of species, we are not merely calculating delta S. Now, third law of thermodynamics states that the absolute entropy of a pure crystalline substance is 0 at 0 Kelvin, which provides a datum against which uh, the entropy absolute entropy of any species may be evaluated. Okay. Now, in the uh, context of uh, combustion thermodynamics, the absolute entropy of substances at the reference temperature of 298 Kelvin and reference pressure of 1 atmosphere have been measured and or theoretically calculated. Okay. For most species, uh, the absolute entropy at this temperature, the reference temperature and reference pressure uh, are available. So, uh, in the same manner as enthalpy of formation, entropy of a substance at any other temperature and pressure is evaluated with respect to this reference state. We have the TDS relationship. So, once I have the absolute entropy at the reference pressure and temperature, that may be used to evaluate the entropy at any other pressure and temperature. Okay. Let us see how that is done. Remember, uh, TDS. is equal to dh minus v dp. So, the uh, absolute temperature of, uh, of an ideal gas at any temperature and pressure may be written like this. The absolute, uh, I am sorry, the absolute entropy of uh, any ideal gas at a temperature of T and P may be uh, written as absolute entropy at uh, T ref comma P ref. So, from T ref to P ref we go to, uh, so from a state or from the reference state of T ref to P ref we then move on to a state of T comma P ref where T is the temperature at which we want to evaluate the absolute entropy. 
So, from T to P ref we then move on to T to P. So, notice that here pressure is constant, here temperature is constant. Okay. So, we use a two step process to go from T ref comma P ref to T comma P any temperature or pressure. So, if we apply a TDS relationship for the first step since the pressure is constant this term will be absent. And in the uh, second step since the temperature is constant the first term will be absent. So, we may thus evaluate the, uh, the absolute entropy at the temperature T comma P as S bar T ref comma P ref plus integral T ref to T dH over T. Right. So, for the uh, first step let me just write it with a different uh, color. So, the so if I apply TDS relationship for the first step right I get DS equal to DH over T which can then be integrated. Right. For the second step I may write DS equal to minus V over T dP or since we are using uh, ideal gas equation of state uh, V over T uh, on a molar basis it is, this is on a mass basis. So, on a, uh, on a mass basis this is simply minus R times dP over P and on a molar basis the R here instead of being with the particular gas constant becomes the universal gas constant. Okay. So, that is applicable to this step the second step. Okay. Now, the term the first two term together is usually identified as S bar of T comma P ref or S bar 0 of uh, T where 0 represents the, the reference state. So, this is actually tabulated in the um, uh, in the absolute entropy table let us just uh, quickly see what is available in the table. So, this uh, table lists absolute entropy of some gases as a function of temperature. Okay. So, S0 at different values of temperature are given in this table. So, we can just simply go into the table look up the value for S0 of T up to a temperature of 4000 is what is given here. Uh, values are available for I think slightly higher temperatures in uh, the source that is listed here. Okay. So, this is how we, uh, we are going to do the calculations. So, we will use this table to do the calculations. Now, in case we have a mixture of gases the uh, absolute entropy of each of the species has to be evaluated using this expression. Okay. And then multiplied by its mole fraction. Okay. Remember the uh, pressure that you use in the expression is the partial pressure of uh, each species. Okay. We are using Dalton's model. So, the pressure in this expression when used for uh, individual species in, a, a species in a mixture must be replaced by the partial pressure of that particular mixture. And we have replaced the partial pressure with the mole fraction here. Okay, now, let us look at application or second law analysis of combustion system. So, we um, uh, here we have the combustor the same one as what we considered uh, when developing the theory for first law analysis of combustion systems. So, we have a combustor air comes in at a temperature T a fuel comes in at a temperature T f and products uh, leave at a temperature T p. Okay. So, entropy balance for this uh, control volume uh, gives us this expression remember Q dot surrounding is equal to minus Q dot. So, we use the uh, same uh, <coughs> uh, step or idea as before we multiply and divide the uh, this group of terms by the uh, by the molecular weight of that particular stream to convert this into a molar basis. Okay, so, if you write this on a molar basis we get the left hand side which is the rate of entropy generation 
divided by the uh, fuel flow rate na, on a molar basis is equal to n i over n f uh, n i dot over n f dot times s i of t p comma p i this is the uh, absolute entropy of each uh, uh, species in the product stream which is why we are using the partial pressure of that particular species minus absolute entropy of the fuel stream minus n i dot over n f dot sigma absolute entropy of each of the species in the uh, incoming air stream. In this case we have only O2 and N2 plus this term. So basically this expression uh, simplifies to something like this very nicely sigma bar which is the uh, entropy generator per kilo mole of fuel comes out to be something like this. Remember our interest is always in uh, the entropy generation in the universe ok. So, and that is what this expression uh, that is what this expression gives us because as we um, uh, as we saw in the module on exergy uh, entropy generation in the universe is tantamount to exergy destruction. Let us go through an example. Uh, determine the entropy generated per k mole of fuel in the earlier example if the gas turbine combustor operates at 3 MPa and the products leave at 1700 Kelvin the specific entropy of liquid n do decay net entry may be taken as 490.660. Uh, this uh, example involved a gas turbine combustor So, air came in at 700 Kelvin and now uh, additionally we are also uh, told that the air enters at 3 ampa uh, fuel which is in uh, liquid N do decay entered at 298 Kelvin and the products uh, leave at 1700 Kelvin. and there was no heat loss from the combustor. The percentage excess air was also uh, determined earlier so that uh, can be made use of now. We need the mole fractions of the individual species in the uh, reactant and the product stream. So, when we calculate the mole fraction of the reactant stream in this case since the fuel enters as a liquid it is not used in the uh, it is not used in the calculation of uh, mole fractions ok. So, on the reactant side we have two species O2 and N2 and uh, this uh, these numbers were obtained based on uh, the calculations that we did earlier with the excess air and uh, this gives mole fraction to be 0 0.21 and 0 0.79. So, on the product side from the balanced chemical reaction we can retrieve these numbers and the mole fractions may be evaluated like this. So, S bar of reactants is composed of S bar of the fuel in liquid form plus the air stream. Air stream itself <coughs> involves uh, S bar of uh, O2 times NO2. So, this is S bar of O2 and this is N O2. Similarly, this is S bar of N2 in the inlet side and this is N of N2 on the inlet side and this has to be evaluated at uh, 3 m power 700 Kelvin. So, we have assumed the pressure to remain constant uh, in the combustor which is a good assumption anyway we are looking at a steady flow system. So, the product stream is at uh, leaves at 3 m power 1700 Kelvin. So, the product stream again uh, consists of CO2, H2O, uh, N2 and O2, uh, mole fractions are known, uh, partial pressures are known and the uh, number of moles of each of the species are known. So, all these quantities are known. Since the temperature is known we basically retrieve SIO uh, at 1700 Kelvin for each of the species and so this gives us the uh, S bar of products to be 47506.56 kilo joule per kilo mole Kelvin of fuel. 
So, uh, entropy generation on a molar basis, so it is not rate of entropy generation, it is entropy generation on a, mol, on a molar basis comes out to be uh, so many uh, 7852 kilo joule per kilo mole of fuel Kelvin. Remember this itself is nothing but sigma dot rate of entropy generation divided by N f dot which is molar flow rate of fuel. So, it is uh, clear that um, um, whatever uh, ideas and theory that we developed earlier basically this equation which we just wrote down simply was developed uh, in great detail in the beginning of this uh, course. Okay. We started with uh, entropy generation in a control volume. Okay, and entropy balance for a control volume. So, you can see that the theory that is developed uh, in the uh, first level course has simply been extended to uh, cover many more applications. Uh, basically, we looked at um, uh, air standard cycles, uh, steam uh, Rankine cycle, vapor compression cycle where uh, for which we calculated the second law efficiency which is a very, very important performance metric. And the second law efficiency itself was calculated based on exergy, which is a new uh, concept that was introduced. But the theory behind exergy was all taken from uh, whatever was developed in the first level course. Okay. Then we looked at an interesting application namely psychrometry, where again we dealt with the mixture of ideal gases, right? Uh, air, moist air, which is nothing but air plus water vapor that is a mixture of ideal gases. Then the concepts developed in the first level course were applied to combustion systems, first law analysis as well as second law analysis, where we were able to calculate the entropy generation in the universe due to chemical reactions or in a combustor steady flow situation. So, these are very important concepts. We have not looked at um, uh, uh, non flow uh, application or example in uh, in this module uh, for uh, the sake of brevity the uh, textbook does contain um, a non flow example related to ic engines so i um, uh, urge you to consult the textbook and go through that example um, the only difference that you are going to see especially in the uh, first law analysis is that you will encounter u instead of h as you are familiar and again here also there will be some minor changes when you uh, calculate uh, the entropy change. But apart from that you know there are no big changes. So, I urge you to consult the textbook for this example. So, what we will uh, do in the uh, next lecture uh, is to uh, uh, begin our discussion uh, of uh, compressible flow through nozzles. <laughs>